I'm Ezra Raya, and this is the Manila Times. The Philippines, known for exporting nurses and healthcare workers worldwide, have been facing a shortage in nurses within its healthcare sector. Groups say the government failed to address the root cause of the shortage and have resulted to a band-aid solution to the problem. Recently, President Bongbong Marcos, along with the Private Sector Advisory Council, announced that around 300 CCAs, or clinical care associates, had been hired in various hospitals nationwide to address the shortage. CCAs are unlicensed health workers or those yet to pass the nursing board exams. The health department partnered with CHED to pave the way for the entry of CCAs into the healthcare system, as well as a nursing review program. This year, around 500,000 nurses renewed their licenses with the PRC, more than enough to fill the estimated shortage. However, insufficiency persists. Nursing groups in the country have been urging the government to make a genuine investment in the nursing sector. Here with us is Philippine Nurses Association PNA President, Dr. Elmer Bondo. Welcome to the Manila Times, sir. So first off, tell us what is the current state of Filipino nurses in the Philippines? So is are we better or for worse? Over the years, we have been receiving, we have been facing a lot of challenges. While we are known as um, the country that produces significant number of skilled nurses, often who are seeking employment outside of the country, we have to also we have to also ask the question: What would be the reason by which these nurses, whom we produce every year, which is said to be is higher in number of volume, are said to be leaving the country? That in itself would actually answer the question: The state of Filipino nurses in the Philippines is not that well because of the fact that Filipino nurses choose not to stay in the Philippines because they actually find better opportunities outside of the country, not only for themselves but also for their family. And for that alone, we cannot actually like compel or request a Filipino nurse with such a degree to actually like not be tempted to the uh, invites of the other countries for them to actually like settle in because of the, you know, uh, better working conditions, better salary, better pace, and better benefits also, not for themselves alone, but also for their family. Because when nurses leave the country, there's also a promise of, you know, um, having the opportunity of like bringing with them the whole family to their workplaces. Uh, to, 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 the, to, the, to, to, to the host country where their work is set to be situated. And there, by the name itself, it's very enticing for the Filipino nurse to actually like, get into. Um, extending that question, Ezra, if you may allow me, no? uh, the state of Philippine nursing I have discussed, in return, when the number of like healthcare providers, particularly nurses, are said to be decreasing in number, um, the ones that are actually suffering are the sector of the community na nangangailangan ng tagapangalaga, which are the, basically the patients. So if our numbers are to be decreasing, but not by, by the thousands, we're also like robbing the opportunity for every Filipino people to receive the best amount of care to be given by the Filipino nurse. Because uh, the reason by which other countries are very, very fond and expectant that Filipino nurses will be actually like moving into their countries is because of, because of um, the ability of a Filipino nurse to actually like, take good care of patients very well. And we are actually robbing the Filipino people of that of that skill and services that our Filipino nurse can actually offer because of the problems that are said to be not resolved from then to present. As what you've said, sir, you know, we have no shortages of nurses. In fact, it's just that uh, more nurses are going out of the country. And uh, it yeah. seems that uh, the Philippines is not the only ones needing nurses. There are other countries as well. Very much in the Western Hemisphere, who could pay better and could offer them a better life. So, sir, um, can you give us an update? Since I know that uh, since there are less, there there's a current shortage in the nurses, and I know the very few nurses na natitira or that are left in the Philippine hospitals ano, are in dire working conditions, as I've heard. Yeah. So, tell us, sir, has the working conditions improved? And uh, how about the monthly salaries of both private and public nurses? Let us qualify first the concept of like salaries. You know? um, there is what we call a great, uh, a great disparity of the salaries received by the nurses working in private and those who are working in public or government hospitals. More so, Ezra. We have to also qualify the fact that there is also a great disparity of salary that is said to be given to nurses working in two types of government facilities. One is DOH retained and the other one is said to be operated by the local government unit or that of the provincial government. 
So dun mo tayo sa isa. The disparity between the salary grade of a nurse working in government facilities and that of a private hospital is too wide. Um, to date, there are still nurses who are receiving as low as 8,000 pesos. That's roughly 16,000 a month. That's basically not sufficient to actually like support oneself, no, oneself, not the, not yet the family, but oneself in terms of his or her daily daily living allowances. So that's a disparity between government and that of the uh, private institutions. Which one is higher? Is that the uh, the salary of the public or the private nurse? Uh, the the salary of the government, of course. No government. Mm -hmm. However, if we're going to like look at the government. The government, the lawa pa rin yan, no? those that are said to be DOH retained and those that are said to be operated and actually like the funds are dependent on the provincial government, the local government units, mas mataas yung mga DOH retained. Because in our Republic Act 9173 or the Philippine Nursing Act of 2002, what is inscribed in there is supposed to be every Filipino nurse is supposed to be receiving a salary grade, a salary grade of 15 is roughly 35,000 pesos. However, when we actually like lobbied for this years years back, only in 2019 that we actually won the battle, but we were only able to successfully like have the SG15 be implemented among nurses working in DOH retained hospitals. That being said, if we're going to compare those that are said to be working in private hospitals, LGU and provincial provincially operated hospitals are not receiving SG15 and therefore yun yung disparity that I'm actually like telling you a while back. If we're going to like look at the time from 2002 to 2024, SG15 is said to be not enough anymore. If we're going to like check the inflation rate year after year, 35,000 for a family, uh, for a nurse with a family is also insufficient. That is why what we are asking government is actually to help us to have what we call an inclusive implementation of the salary grade. Uh, good thing about this interview was uh, is the fact that I have received yesterday the response of the response of the Malacanang Palace through the uh, Department of Health about our uh, position papers that we sent the Office of the President last year by September. Yesterday, we have received uh, uh, the discussion of the Department of Health and said that they cannot actually like um, ask the ALG to actually like regulate that of the. Uh, hospitals operated by the LGU and the provincial government because they are said to be uh, dependent on how much money they actually act, they actually like, produce every year this, in their budgetary requirements. However, if we're going to like argue on that particular particular note, health is said to be something very essential because if the Filipino people, particularly that of the citizens, are said to be very sick without any carers, the citizens will actually die and the society will actually not flourish. And that's one of the arguments that we're always telling government that if and when that DILG cannot actually compel because of the man because of the of the ruling that you know local government actually have their own means of like generating their their own income, there must actually be what we call a policy coming from national government to actually like compel the local government to always find means to actually like jack up the amount of budget they actually like provide for healthcare. To date, the problem in terms of the working conditions of the uh, nurses working in government hospitals is the fact that wala silang plantilla. Mataas pa rin sa mga nurses working in government hospitals are said to be working on a contractual basis or that of a job order position in which salary is not given on time, on the dot, normally a month, two months, or three months delay. So to go back to your question, is uh, uh, does the working condition of Filipino nurses change? It actually did not. Because it's the same problem we actually have faced before, even before, months prior to the pandemic, during the pandemic, and actually right after the pandemic. What is really quite saddening is the fact that during the pandemic, we were given so much of a promise, promises to actually like support the causes of the nurses of the Philippines. Kaya lang, to date, when we look back, we were then tagged as the heroes of the pandemic, given promises to actually like be at the front lines all the time. Because during that time, we were we were very essential as part of the of the society. Pero ngayon, we feel as though that we are again being sidestepped because of the realities that what we desire for our colleagues who are working at the hospital, government is seemingly not providing adequate solutions for the problems that are said to be besetting nursing from then to present. What we hear from from last year to present our solutions that in our organization, the PNA, we call Band-Aid Solutions. Going there, sir, ano, now that you've mentioned it, so recently there's been uh, 
uh, around hundreds were hired as CCAs or clinical care associates. So these are uh, clinical care associates. So they are unlicensed as far as we're concerned, and they are yet to pass the board exam. So meaning right. they eventually they eventually will. So do you agree with the hiring of these um unlicensed uh, healthcare workers or you have a term that you call them yeah we call them clinical care associates yes that's, he... that's a term coined by the government particularly that of the joint uh, administrative order between shed and that of doh that was signed last year um the first signing was in july but there was ceremonial signing that was held last november 2023 also Actually, Lamo Ezra, if we're going to like look back at the hist look back at the history of such particular proposal, it all started with a proclamation by DOH sometime in June last year that uh, DOH is going to issue a temporary license to those who did not pass the board exams, uh, particularly yeah. those who got seventy four. Um, we did not expect that was that was a prelude actually to the clinical associates because at that time when we actually like um actually we were able to. Um, block that proposal because as curb in RA nine one seven three our our public act uh, for nursing in the Philippines we cannot provide temporary licenses to those who are said to be under boards because the only way for us to be given licenses is you're supposed to be a practitioner plus license of that and in our in RA nine one seven the only provision about the provision of the temporary licenses is from is on the perspective that we're going to bring in a talent outside of the country in the Philippines to actually work for us because of a certain need, for example, during a pandemic or a particular outbreak. No, now we were able to intercept that, and we were very happy about it. But there were rumors during that time that you know the clinical clinical care associate would actually be on their way, but it was actually hidden out hidden from us. You no, know, the the implement the signing the 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 the, the writing of the uh, the writing of the guidelines. And the joint administrative order, it was not actually participated in by PNA. And that basically is quite saddening for us on our part as a welfare organization because we were supposed to be part of that particular drafting of that particular set of guidance. Because if and when we were actually part of it, we would outrightly say a strong negation on that particular proposal. Because clinical care associates, as per uh, claimed by PISAC last I think that was two months ago that the Philippine government was able to champion the problem of Philippine HRH because of the 200 uh, hired CCAs that were deployed both in private and government hospitals. We beg to disagree because, because um, CCAs can never replace or be a complementary worker with that of a registered nurse because um, we know for a fact that being licensed is your gateway towards the world of a professional. And without the license, you cannot practice similar to that of a professional. Therefore, your work really is a, a step-down care provider to that of a nurse. But the problem that we actually have with clinical care associates would be they are not actually like RNs, but they are graduates of the program. And if they are graduates of the program, we cannot actually like prevent them, number one, from being abused by the management of the hospital to actually allow them to do certain things that are said to be outside their, in, uh, their, 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 competency, their competence. But the question there would be, what are the things that they can do without a proof that they are competent enough to do so because they don't have a license? Number two, we cannot also prevent this clinical care associates to actually like do things that they were trained for short of a license that when actually a per oh, say when they actually like commit an error for that matter, they will not be the ones liable because they don't have any license. The one supervising them will be liable for their negligent acts, if ever there will be. And these are the RNs. That's where we that's where we are coming in. Given the fact that RNs are supervising the CCAs, RNs work is said to be also split. Instead of them paying attention to the people committed under their care, you will actually be like looking into the work done by the CCAs. And mind you also, Ezra, there were also claims no, that the guidelines shall. 2023-001 between said and that of the OH said that there are only what we call certain tasks that a CCA can actually do. If we're going to look at the matrices that were provided for by that are provided in rather the the JSA or the administrative, yeah. you will see there there are certain activities that are said to be done by the clinical care associates that are supposed to be done only by a licensed nurse license for that matter. And to top it all. Yeah. One word, assessment. Assessment is supposed to be not delegated because assessment is basically a, a nursing responsibility that can actually be done by a nurse for that matter. Secondly, we are not in favor of that particular concept of hiring unlicensed, unlicensed nurses or what we call clinical care associates because 
um, the, the Zhao in itself is not very clear about the protection that it provides the clinical care associates. Suppose there actually be what we call negligent acts. Um, the burden of the burden is said to be connected to the one supervising them. And the one supervising them is not only the staff nurse, but also, but more importantly, spelled out in the job is the shift nurses. So that for that particular, for that particular line and for that particular clause, the RNs are still the ones responsible in overseeing the activities of the clinical care associates. Um, case in point. Last week, a day before the signing of the MOU between PNA and that of the Manila Times, came a news that was actually like written to actually like give out a warning to the public about signing of no claims, especially during in, in the hospital problem. There was a news that came out that there was a nursing aide who actually like made use of a glove to actually like be filled with warm water and placed around the genital area of a pediatric pediatric patient that actually bursted that caused the first and second degree burns on the second part of the burns. of the patient on the so, child. He's a nursing aide. And nursing aide works under the supervision of the nurse. And clinical care associates actually are similar to that of a nursing aide. When you talk about aides or aides, they're supposed to be like licensed professionals, not step-down care providers. And that is where we are coming in. That's why we are very persistent in making the government know of the two situation of Philippine nursing so that uh, we can actually like win the battle for our colleagues to actually like get what they actually deserve because it is high time for them to actually receive what must be given unto them. Very well said, Sir Ano. And um, the registered nurses are actually still supervising the CCAs or the clinical care associates, which are also no also parang nursing aid did sila, no? Yeah, correct. Uh -oh. And uh, certain uh, certain accidents may be committed if these nursing aides are um, released into the healthcare system. As Correct. You said. And they have yeah. nothing to lose because they don't have licenses that could be canceled. Sir, for my final question, let's let's talk about long-term solutions. So what should the government do to entice more Filipino nurses to work here at home? Actually, our battle cry would be, it's always the government should provide a reason for Filipino nurses to stay. And what must be done as of current would be, number one, is to actually like provide the nurses what must be given unto us. We need to actually have a, 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 great, a great decision coming from the government that in SG15 be implemented across, regardless whether the hospital has the ability or not the ability today, for it is said to be written in the law, it must be implemented. On the side of the government, on the side of the government, if there is a need to actually like implement SC15, dapat may implement yan ng mabuti. It's not supposed to be a reason that ah, kulang ang budget, kulang ito, ganyan, ganyan. Because a law is written, it's the mandate of the government to look for funds for that particular for that particular law to be properly implemented. Number two, government also should rethink that you know. LGUs and provincial governments be also give be given a compelling order coming from the national government that they must be prioritizing you know, the implementation of SC15, but to date, hindi na gagawa yun. Number three, if private hospitals really have these difficulties of like, you know, providing what must be given unto the nurses in terms of salary grade, they must actually like do, do better in terms of their, you know, cutting down of expenses to be shifted towards salaries of their manpower so that they can actually like maintain their operations. Uh, apart from that, governments also rethink of like doing some things to, to, to recalibrate the benefit packages that are received by the nurses in the Philippines. Because if we cannot actually like mimic or mirror the benefit packages that other gov other countries are providing nurses when they leave the country here in the Philippines, we cannot actually like give them enough reasons for them to stay. Because you know, um, of course, no, nag-aral kami ng apat na taon and we spent so much, so much in terms of our education towards licensure and all. Tapos pag graduate namin, ang susweldohin namin hindi pa aabot sa isang semester's tuition fee ang amin katanggapin one one. So no Filipino nurse can actually like stay in the Country. You know, there are what we call government initiatives, for example, bilateral agreements that were done, you know, imposing a deployment ban. But, you know, at the end of the day, you cannot prevent the nurses from leaving the country, not unless government would actually like provide, you know, a decent working environment for them, humane salary that is said to be similar to that of what nurses can be receiving outside of the country. 
kung ganun na mangyayari, that can actually become the solution for us to actually like enjoy the services given forth by the Filipino nurses that's being enjoyed by the rest of the world because, you know, the care given by a Filipino nurse is said to be world-class naman talaga. But the thing is, as I said a while back, we are being robbed of that opportunity of like experiencing the care of a fellow Filipino because no one cares for them. Kumbaga, the, the, the concept would be we need to provide, we need to care for the carers of the country. Kasi in one paper I wrote, kasi ganito sa nakalagay doon na there will be no progressive society without care providers because in the absence of care providers, the society will be ill and society will not progress. That might probably be one of the strongest cry, ba, ba, ano, battle cry that we actually like tell government is kung walang mga nurses, hindi magpo-progress ang bansa natin because you know, sick individuals will always be sick because of the absence of the bridge from the bridge of the bridge from the heart of the healthcare profession which basically is said to be nursing long term solutions legislations we are really hopeful that government will actually heed our call in making sure that what we are lobbying for the law to be to be more caring for nurses salary grade is said to be well implemented even higher because of the inflation rate. Number two, a good working environment for nurses, the end of contractualization, and you know, advancing other, other career pathways for nurses, particularly advanced practice nursing, is a gateway for us to be able to like match what is being offered by the world to the Philippine nurses that is very attractive. And we have, if we have all of those in our country, at least we're going to give every Filipino nurse the right to decide, an informed decision, that staying is equally as beneficial compared to leaving. And those who are said to be leaving the country are the ones who have actually decided upon themselves that they actually are leaving the country not for the reason of financial advancement, but more importantly, other reasons that is said to be not related only to finances because they could actually like get that also from our country. Very well said, Sir El Moreno. Thank you so much, Philippine Nurses Association President and Registered Nurse, Elmer Bondok. And like what you said, we need to care more for our health care workers. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.